When starting your first print-on-demand business, there is a area of I don't know what I don't know. This video should answer all of the I don't know what I don't knows. And if you're new to my channel, I want to give you a warm welcome to the channel. My name is Heather. I've been a top prior 1% Etsy seller. I've done over 500K in revenue between all of my shops that I have created. Without further ado, I just want to say that there's a lot of things I had to learn and I just wish I knew sooner and that I did way sooner in my journey with Etsy and Print On Demand. So without further ado, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video for more videos like this to be shown your way on the YouTube algorithm. And then also, if you find a really good tip or part of this video, please comment, I don't know what I don't know, dot, 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 and put the topic or area section of this video that you found most helpful. Besides that, I, oh my gosh, my brain just totally pooped out. Besides that, we're going to hop straight into this video, guys. The first setting we need to talk about is automatic approval and what this means for your shop. With Printify, you have settings at your disposal to alter how and when you want orders to be pushed automatically. For me personally, I have always kept it at either automatically approve within one hour or automatically approve within 24 hours. One of the reasons why I have done automatically in one hour, and that's what I typically recommend to most sellers, is because Printify and most major print-on-demand companies, the print providers that they have, have a queue system. So the queue system is basically once your order is sent to them, you're put in a queue as far as which order is going to be printed, packed, and shipped first, dependent on the time that you push that order. That is one of the reasons why I recommend doing automatically within one hour because we want our orders from Etsy to be pushed to Printify as soon as possible so they're printed, packed, and shipped in time so your customer gets their products and gifts in time for whatever event that maybe they're giving their gifts or products too. So that leads into the next part of your Printify account that you should know about as a beginner, which is the other orders area on your Printify account. So this is in the my order section on Printify. And then if you click over to other orders, Sometimes orders can drop in that section if maybe the SKU number doesn't link with any active products that you have in your Printify account. So you should know about that area in the case you find that you had an order on Etsy and it's not showing up on Printify. It could have dropped in that area. Now, if you're using multiple print-on-demand companies, you'll notice that the other print-on-demand companies' orders will also drop in that other order section. So you definitely can have multiple print-on-demand companies within your Etsy shop, but just know that you're going to come across having increased shipping fees. So if a customer purchases one product that you have linked to Printify and one product that's linked to a different company, you're going to see double shipping charges that you as the seller will end up paying. So the next setting that you should absolutely know about, also, I don't know if anyone just saw, but I almost tripped. <laughs> I wanna say, I am not a perfect person. My editor, I wanna shout him out for a moment. Thank you to Danilo, shout out to you. Anyways, let's, let's continue here. The next setting that you should absolutely know about and adjust in your shop is the ship from address in your Printify store settings area. This is what's going to show on your packages. Now, Printify has a default address. That is usually Printify's address or even the print on demand provider's address at times as well. Now, if you find that you rather have your home address in the case that you find maybe customers keep mailing back products and packages to Printify rather than you, then I would recommend changing this address. What happens with most major print on demand companies is they will offer to ship it back to you, but it is at a fee or the company will donate it. If you don't want your products and return products donated or 
to have to pay a fee to ship to your address, changing that address on the package to your own address might be better. That has happened to me and that's why I say this because again, learn from my experiences. <laughs> So the next setting that you should know about and know that it exists is the order routing feature. Now again, this is in the store settings area of your Printify account and I'll show on the screen where you can access this. This allows Printify to automatically route a, let's say out of stock product. Maybe you have the Bell and Canvas 3001 in size small that goes out of stock in your shop. Then let's say Swift POD has the same inventory and stock on that Bell and Canvas 3001 t-shirt. Printify's order routing will select another print provider for you without you having to manually go in and change that order. There are some pros and cons and we're gonna go over those for a moment here. So pros of this feature is that this pushes us to the queue quite quickly. The downsides of enabling order routing is that in some cases, the print of the design could possibly be just slightly a different sizing. This isn't always the case and Printify does have a very smart system that will try to make it as like the original, but there are cases that sometimes the print can come out a little bit different. Other thing to factor in is when you enable order routing, there is a maximum of the increased maybe production costs by switching print providers that you will have to factor in. And then also shipping prices could be different if you're using a different print provider. So you want to be wary of that and just set a max that you are comfortable with. Personally, I like setting $2. Outside of that, that is it for order routing and what you need to know about that. The next feature that you should know about is the tracking notification. So this is the exciting part about print on demand is once you get an order coming through, you can track every single shipment and order that you get. And also you can get notifications. Now I will say once you you start to hit maybe over a few orders a day, this feature can get a little bit too much in the inbox, if you know what I mean. Personally, I ended up turning off this feature just because it kind of get a little, a little too much, a little, just a little tiny, tiny bit. So the last setting that you should know about, and again, the default setting on Printify is typically where you wanna leave it. But in the case, let's say we had an inventory issue again, like I was talking about earlier with the Bell and Canvas 3001, if one item's out of stock, Instead of watching that order, you can automatically send it to production. This is a great feature to turn to automatic if you are just waiting and you maybe notified the customer, do you want to keep this order or do you want a refund? If they say, hey, I'll wait for the restock, then you can just turn that on to automatic and hopefully once that product comes back in stock, Printify will push it through as soon as that happens. So the next setting that you should know about and that you can turn on is branding inserts and gift messages. So this is a really cool feature that Printify offers. Not every print on demand provider within Printify offers this, but the major ones do. So Monster Digital, Swift POD, Diamond AT, and a few others I'll list on the screen. If you're trying to add in a branded insert, that states something along the lines of, thanks for shopping with us, scan this QR code to get 20% off your next purchase. And then you can link or put maybe a coupon or have them go to a page. Maybe if you have an email lead magnet too, you could also add in a QR code that just says, hey, scan this for 20% off your next purchase by signing up for our email list. And that is just a very nice and personal touch to add to someone's package they receive in the mail. The second thing that you can turn on in your store settings is gift messages. This is such a cool feature because again, we're adding that personal touch for the customer so that Printify will print a card that has a gift message on it and it's inserted into the package as well. And what's really cool is you can have a branded insert 
plus a gift message insert. Now, I wanna note there is a fee per gift message and per branded insert, but I also wanna say at this portion of the video that this is a huge plus for your shop. And again, it adds that personal touch that we couldn't do prior to these features. So the next area that we do need to go over is the wallet area in payment details in your Printify settings and account. You do have the opportunity to get 30 days of Printify premium for free if you haven't already by using the code I'm going to put down below. It's currently Heather X Studio, but this code can change every now and then, and it just allows you to have more profit. Under this payment section, something important to note is that you do want to make sure you have a card card on file or a way to pay for your orders. This is a funny thing I did in my third shop I created that I did not enter in my payment details when I got my first order on my shop in this newly created shop. And I had a red button on my order because I did not complete my payment information. So learn from my mistakes, guys. Also, here's a Here's a print on demand pro tip, but um, if you have a business credit card, print on demand is the best business model for having a business credit card because for every purchase I have, AKA my Printify orders, I pay off my credit card every time Etsy deposits funds and I get a lot of credit card points. I've made thousands of dollars in credit card points by doing that just just for those who are like me and they like more money in a different way right so the last thing that you want to check in this section is that it is reflecting your currency of the current country that you live in and the currency that you typically accept as form of payment so i hope that helps for any international uh pod friends that are watching this channel right now this is something that affects your payments and invoices and how you are collecting your invoices on a month to month basis. Now you will want to scroll down to the invoice section. And personally, this is what I found through working with a lot of accountants and bookkeepers is they typically want the month to month statements. And even if you are doing your bookkeeping on your own, month to month is much, much easier better for bookkeeping purposes rather than per order. Now I want to have a moment because I have to say that I am not a tax professional by any means. I just recommend seeking out one maybe in your first year of operating your business just to save you on taxes and make sure that you are doing your taxes correctly and saving maybe what you need per your state and country that you live in. If you are a print on demand business owner, you are technically a reseller, which means that you should have a resale tax exempt certificate of some sort so that you're not being taxed by Printify or any print on demand company. Now, in order to obtain a tax exempt certificate, you need to go to your wallet, then to the tax settings area, and then you will select your country and you can generate a tax exempt certificate through the wizard that Printify has on their website, which is super helpful and nice that they have this because you can create it underneath Printify's settings area and that wizard there. So in the case that you haven't had a business number or maybe the number that the wizard is asking for or the document is asking for at this point, in the setting area, then that is completely okay. I would research in your state what is the process and what you need in order to obtain and register in your state for state sales tax. Now I know that sounds scary. And again, this is something that you should contact a professional about. Besides that guys, that is it for our video today. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Maybe a feature or a setting that you learned during this video today. Don't forget to check out my membership called the Best Seller Insider Membership down below. This is a live coaching membership where I go live two times a month in a group setting on Zoom. And then also I run monthly master classes with 
things that I really don't share anywhere else. So it's a really great membership if you are looking for community and advice from myself and other Etsy sellers. So outside of that, I hope this video helped and I'll see you guys in the next video here.